So what can we do about it? Well, there's diet systems out there. Um, I'm sure you've heard of them or tried some of them. Nutrisystem, SlimFast, Atkins, Weight Watchers, South Beach, just to name a few, and the list goes on and on. They tend to result in relatively rapid weight loss, 10 to 30 pounds, and that's what you see on those commercials. Hey, I lost you know X number of pounds in two weeks on the so-and-so diet. But the problem is that patients typically plateau and they get discouraged. So they'll drop that weight fast and then they'll hit a weight that they just can't budge from. And they'll stay there for a month or two months or you know however long they stick with the diet. And then the second they get off of it because they're tired of dealing with this and they're not seeing results, all that weight comes right back, if not a little bit more. And you can see the, the pattern in a lot of patients is you try a diet, you lose a little bit of weight, you get frustrated, you come off, you gain plus a little bit. Try a different diet, lose some of the weight, get frustrated, gain some plus a little bit more and just keeps going up and up and up over time. And that's where the term yo-yo dieting comes from, that up and down that we see. Uh, lifestyle modification. So this is behavioral therapy. Usually it's weekly sessions with a trained interventionist for support and encouragement, like a dietitian or a therapist of some kind. They're there to make sure that you're counting your calories, you're eating right, you're exercising. Maybe they, they make suggestions about eat this or cut that out or try this exercise or kind of like a, a life coach to, to keep you on track. The nice thing about this is it's low cost and it's low risk. It's basically just words in a pep talk, which is great. Patients tend to lose around 5 to 10% of body weight with it when they stick with it. The problem is that it fails to achieve long-term weight loss if you don't continue the effort. So you miss one week, you're like, yeah, you know, I lost 30 pounds, I'm doing well. I'm going to skip this appointment. I'm going to skip the next one. And one after that, some of the old habits creep in before you know it, you're back to where you started. So that's the issue there. You can see here, short-term obesity therapy doesn't result in long-term weight loss. So they took three groups of patients and one of them, they tried diet and another, they tried behavioral therapy and in a third, they tried a combination. They had them do this for six months. You can see most patients during that time lost between 10 and 15 kilograms. It's about 20 to 30 pounds, which is not bad, but then they cut them loose. And you can see that after five years, most patients had either regained all the weight or gained even more weight than where they had, had started. So unfortunately it doesn't do very well with, uh, with the obese patient. So what else can we try? Uh, there's medications out there, a couple of them like fentramine, topiramate, orlistat, lorcaserin, liraglutide, naltrexone. Uh, these tend to result in about three to 9% body weight loss when you combine them with diet and exercise after about a year. They work a little bit slower, but you have to stick with them. You have to diet and exercise, and you're going to hear me harp on that. That's not something you can just cut out of the, the deal. You have to diet and exercise no matter what you do. But the pills, they kind of help things along a little bit. The downsides, pills are expensive. These don't tend to be covered by insurance. And we don't know what the long-term effects are, nor is anybody really willing to, uh, to research that. Nobody wants to put you on fentramine for 40 years and see exactly what it does to your heart, to your lungs, your kidneys, your bowels. We don't know what the effects are, so we can't really recommend it for long-term. So in 1991, the NIH had a conference on gastrointestinal surgery for severe obesity, what we call BMI of 35 and up. And they reached the conclusion that diet weight reduction with or without behavioral therapy, with or without drug therapy has an unacceptably high rate of weight regain in a morbidly obese patient within two years. Meaning if you're morbidly obese and you try any of these options, the likelihood that you will succeed and keep that weight off is low or at least unacceptably low. Meaning we can do better than this. We should do better than this. So going back to that BMI, picture that we did before. The way I like to think of it is, you know, if normal is kind of the destination where you're trying to get to, let's say it's San Francisco, just for, um, for argument's sake, the further along you are on the BMI scale to the right, the farther of a trip it is. So let's say you're just overweight, you're sitting at a BMI of 27. That's like, you know, 10 miles down the road. And I, I don't know my California geography that well, but let's say it's one of the suburbs, you're trying to get to the middle of town. You can do that by walking. You can do that with a bike. It's doable. That's your diet and exercise. Now let's say you're closer to a BMI of 32. You're obese. Now 50 to 100 miles out. Maybe you're starting to head towards the middle of California there. 
This is, you know, is it doable by walking? Yes, it's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of time. Can you do it with a bike, which would be maybe medications or something like that? Yeah, um, I've had the displeasure of riding my bike for 100 miles in one sitting. It's tough, but it is doable. Let's say you're getting closer to those BMIs of, you know, 35 and up, 40 and up. Now you're talking 500 mile trip, 1000 mile trip. We're moving into the next state over, next time zone over. Walking's not going to do it. A bike's not going to do it. You're going to need a car or you're going to need a plane at that point. And that's kind of what surgery is, comparatively speaking. So let's start on the lowest end of, um, of the procedures we offer. So Orbera, this is what we call the intragastric balloon. Uh, for anyone who's ever seen a uh, saline breast implant, it's kind of like that. We put it in using a scope down your throat. Uh, you're asleep for the procedure. We put it in completely deflated. And then we put a little needle into it and we fill it up with salt water. And it ends up taking about a third of the space in your stomach. So it helps you eat smaller meals, helps you feel fuller, helps you stick to your diet. Um, and when you combine that with diet and exercise, you lose around 3.1 times the weight that you would just with diet and exercise alone. I think it's a decent option for patients who are closer to a BMI of 30. The issue here is that you cannot keep it in for longer than six months. Uh, at an absolute ceiling is eight months, but after six months is when we talk about getting it out. I think it's a short-term solution to kind of kickstart the process if you're just trying to, to get to normal and you're not too far off from it. So like hitchhiking your way 100 miles, right? Doable. If you're interested in learning more about bariatric surgery or finding out if it's the right option for you, schedule your appointment with us today.